and the truth. Okay, here we go. The um, so I will now that we have time today, I will slowly explain um, some of the points. The Dharma seal verifies the truth like a royal seal. Now, some of you may have list, heard about this Dharma seal, and it's quite um, often cited uh, in the Vashrayana teachings uh, or the Tibetan uh, Buddhism teachings. So the wondrous Dharma is true, unmoving, unchanging. In other words, uh, the wondrous Dharma referring to the truth uh, is unmoving and unchanging, and Martha's already mentioned before that the truth is permanent and has been there since the beginningless, beginningless time. So the beginner's time meaning um, is so long ago that no one knows how far it goes. And we ourselves uh, has been around since the beginningless time. The only problem with us is that we've been gathering, we have been gathering dusts um, through uh, all these innumerable lifetimes that we have in the past. So therefore, uh, with the right Dharma, uh, we have the seal that verifies the truth and clar clarifies reality. So what the seal does is that now that because our hearts and minds are all covered in all these thick layers of dust, we cannot see the truth. And that's what Dharma is uh, available for us, for us to understand how we can see the truth. Now, whether we can see the truth or not, it's entirely up to us, okay? We're still covered in dusk, but it's giving us a way to remove what is dust. And that clarifies the reality. It does not mean that the moment you have the Dharma, um, you can, uh, with the wave of the wand, uh, you then realize the truth. Uh, not quite that. So it gives us no way. Uh, it's just like, um, it's like, just like a dilapidated house. It's part of all the rubbish. And we're given a way to clean the house. So that's what we need to do that. So it benefits sentient beings so that they can understand the Dharma clearly. And to understand the Dharma clearly is to understand Ourself. Without understanding ourself, we can never understand uh, the Dharma. So, Master's explanation as we live every day, the Dharma being verified uh, in our lives. As we live, as we live every day, is the Dharma uh, being verified in our life. In other words, are we applying the Dharma into our daily life? So if we listen to the Dharma and we contemplate, we realize, and are we putting the Dharma into practice? So the Buddha Dharma is, is inseparable from the workings of worldly matters. By being mindful, we can take the Dharma to heart and verify it in our daily living. So this two few lines in here refers to what you call experiential learning. You see, life is a journey of learning and growing. Okay, only two, learning and growing. And that's what we have. And this is what the path for us as a householder. So this journey of learning is, uh, we learn by, with our eyes, we see, right? So we observe what is happening in the nature, what's happening around us, and we learn from that. So if you know the Dharma, then you apply to what you see. You see the phenomena of people, pandas and objects. Um, you see, you can read the books, read the Dharma books the Master have written. And um, whatever that you may be reading, and that's learning through your eyes. Then we learn through our ears, and this is what we hear. So you listen to the Dharma by the Master, you also listen to the cries of pains of suffering from those whom you serve. So then when you apply that and you then discern where the Dharma uh, can be applied and what it means to you. 
and you experience that as a result of all this. So when you apply the Dharma, you experience it, and that is where um, you can verify it in our daily living. So after we have verified the right Dharma taught by the Buddha, then we have imprinted it in our minds. It's just like how the Dharma, this is how the Dharma seal works. When whatever image is carved into a seal, this time on the piece of paper is imprinted. Um, in uh, the image is imprinted um, in the way the seal is being carved. So this Dharma seal is that um, it's the imprint in our hearts and our minds. Now, so obviously in the metaphorically, it's what is being described and what being explained by the master. And so you use an analogy of what the seal means um, that you have the right Dharma. But what really uh, means in this Dharma seal is that when it's imprinted in you, that means it's part of you, it's part of your nature. Now, how can it be? How can that be? Now, if you then go back and understand the consciousness, how does a habitual tendency comes about, right? It's from all the past repeated actions that we have. So it's then residing in the seventh consciousness, and therefore, uh, um, and that's what it is. And, and accept that that is a bad imprint. So we reverse that by adapting a dharma in our in our heart and our minds, and we and we do that every day. That over time it will be imprinted in your heart and in your mind. So that is part of the journey of learning and growth. So you learn the Dharma, you learn to do so, then you realize the teachings. When you realize the teachings, you apply the teachings, and that's where you grow. You grow in your heart, you grow in your mind, and when you do that, you will grow in your spiritual consciousness. So when you grow in a spiritual consciousness, this is where your Dharma seal will be. So therefore, when you get practice and to do that, and this lifetime, we are unable to get enlightened. So therefore, in the future lifetime, wherever you may be, and whatever conditions it may be, at least you have that seal still with you. And that is practicing into the mind continuum. And um, I will explain more of this as when Master uh, shared the teachings. Uh, I'm sure that she'll be talking further in depth about this. So three vehicles into one. And if you know that um, in the, uh, Master has been explaining the three Dharma vehicles into one great vehicle. So every Buddha has gone through this process. And, and this is why I'd have to go through this process because the minds of ordinary people are not able to discern uh, the teachings. And so therefore he has to teach the provisional teachings before, before um, the true teachings are being taught. So all Buddha share the same path. So therefore we should take comfort uh, to know that listening to the Buddha Dharma can also be ever listening to the same Dharma um, from all the past uh, Buddhas. So there's only one truth. And to me, I, I think this line is very meaningful if you understand the third of the four bodies of the vows. The third vow says, Dharma doors are innumerable. I vow to enter them all. So therefore, entering all the Dharma doors, if there are innumerable Buddhas, do you need to enter all these doors? But so therefore, it's the same. If it's the same door, when one door is open, all the Dharma doors, the other doors are open and you enter them. But as to how wide you can enter one door to the other door, uh, it depends on your realization. And this is where the Dharma seal um, is important to understand, to imprint that into our hearts and our minds. So, so therefore, this full realization of the whole truth will take a, it's a long journey. So the wondrous Dharma is true. It cannot change, nor does it have room for change. And because it's only one truth and truth is the truth. There's no such thing as a false truth or the truth of the truth. And it's just a single, single universal truth. This is because the true suchness has no substance. And because it has no substance, it's a great empty space. 
So this metaphor of a great empty space meaning is that that single one truth can explain everything. It's accommodating. An empty space can accommodate anything. So therefore, um, this true suchness and um, that we have, and Master sometimes say, in this reading, there's also true suchness as true emptiness. And yet there is also wondrous existence. So this is what this being the truth, the single truth can explain um, everything that applies to. Now, I um, I actually uh, do engage in uh, dialogues uh, with my friends of other faith, um, obviously more so with my Christian friends in my early days, but not so much now. Um, but I do get uh, engaged in some dialogues uh, with my uh, Muslim friends, um, and we try to exchange views about things. And um, the more I discuss, the more I realize then um, the, 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 the understanding, we all have a common understanding and of this, about what the truth is. So therefore, there is no differentiation of this single truth, okay? But the only difference is, is um, a lot of it is the interpretation of rituals of how the practice should be. So that that some of, sometimes some of this, uh, especially if we go to uh, in Mahayana practice that, that we are in and go to China, um, and there is always a mixture of some traditions uh, that is involved. And even in Vajrayana Buddhism, um, they have uh, Gelubak tradition, Yingma Baha tradition, uh, and so on and so forth. And um, but the truth they talk about is the same. So therefore, I um, sometimes talk about a spiritual practice rather than a religious part. So all principles become apparent through conversion, convergence of causes and conditions. Obviously, as you understand that and the causes we have. Uh, done in the past, it will manifest when the conditions are right. These are seeds, and they're all deposited in our high consciousness zone, and it's the eighth consciousness which is deposited. And we understand all these things, and uh, we purify ourselves in the process. And and when we do that, uh, then we can return to emptiness to understand uh, principles and those conditions that may arise. Um, then, then, um, then me, depending on what the karma exists, how maybe I understand and get into that practice, uh, we will be then able to get into the unconditional uh, dharma to understand that. So that emptiness is a true emptiness. The emptiness is, um, and the universe is true emptiness. And this is why you call the universal truth and the universe contains all phenomena. And what does this phenomena? Why the same thing? The universe is empty, yet it contains all the phenomena. If you remember, phenomena is real of self. So the phenomena is the manifestation of our mind. So therefore, if we can then purify the mind and, um, and renounce all the afflictions that we have, then we're able to then realize what is true emptiness is. So the right Dharma verifies the truth. So the Buddha hope that we have the right faith. Uh, why we need to have the right faith uh, is because we haven't journeyed in the other part of um, of a night. We haven't journeyed to the, the other shore. We do not have journey to the other shore. We have to rely on someone who has been to the, to the other side to tell us what is that. So therefore, there are two things if we want to have that faith. Number one is whether the person actually been there, right? To the other shore. And number two is whether well, person is going to tell you the truth. So this is the two things that you yourself have to verify. And um, so therefore, you know then that you have the faith. Therefore, you have faith in the Buddha, you have faith in the teachings. Only then that your heart can be open. So when we hear the Dharma, we must then have the Dharma seal. We must have the Dharma seal by taking what we have heard and applying to our data like to seal it in our heart. So we must take the true Dharma into our minds. Why I uh, talk about heart and now the minds is because as I, I've mentioned to you all, unless the heart is open, the mind cannot be open. So therefore the doorway or the gateway of enlightenment 
is through our mind. Okay? But the doorway to open, the way to open the door is through our heart. So, but in, I think in, uh, in Mandarin, you only have one word, the heart and the mind, which is sin. So therefore, uh, that's why when, uh, because I'm English education, and explain the heart and the mind. And as most of us, uh, have been English educated, we, that's the way we understand that. So true Dharma has a Dharma seal, which can verify it is a true Dharma. So it's like um, uh, the emperor will come in, that is the seal, that is indeed the truth. But you can only verify the seal through experiential learning to yourself. So in my journey, um, I, and obviously, as you all know, I. I, I'm on the path of contemplation and a part of the Kuan Yin con contemplative order. Um, and I've been in this path for since 1985. And so this is my 36th year that I've been in the path. But I did not get uh, initiated until after 30 years. Um, and that's because I, I, partly because I wasn't diligent uh, in my practice, and uh, partly because uh, I'm curious, and partly because I also want to observe, and I want to know exactly what uh, the truth is before I commit myself. So you can say that I was a seeker, okay? So I was a seeker, and so uh, here I am. Um, it will take such a long time. And uh, the Dhamma Seal is the ultimate reality of one vehicle. And with all the Buddhas, uh, when what all the Buddhas uh, teach and accept. So this is one truth. It is transmitted from mind to the next, and those with whom we resonate with immediately become Buddhas. So can one then get transmitted immediately and can become Buddhas? Obviously, there are, there are so stories uh, of um, one who can become enlightened uh, from through this transmission. Obviously, for us. Uh, the teaching are transmitted to us through our uh, sensory consciousness, uh, our ears, we listen, right? Our eyes, you can read, and, uh, and as I explained to you, seeing, hearing, experiencing, contemplating, realizing, and these are the five steps that one can get into this uh, learning and discerning how deep the teachings uh, can be. So it is like it's passing the royal seal uh, one to the other in, in a kingdom. That's how the Dharma Seal is transmitted. And for us, the transmission is through the teachings. Now, obviously, those um, you, you may have heard about past uh, masters who can transmit, the master can transmit to the next uh, through mind and mind communication. Um, and um, and uh, if you, um, I'm not sure how much you heard about this, but this transmission uh, through the points, and so therefore they have gone beyond um, learning from the external faculties. The external faculties are our the ears, our eyes. Uh, these are all the six central consciousness and through the mind. So mind to mind communication uh, can be go through, and that is through the inner hearing, inner seeing, and this is where they have developed. The inner being uh, of, and that's when when the outside world can be disturbing, but inside they are still joyful, and that is what the inner development is about. Okay, so when we open the door to our minds, we see how we are filled with love. So when we open the door, so like how you see how we look. That's I pick up this line because um, that resonates with what I'm explaining to you all is that. Only when the heart can accept, then the mind to the door can be open. So therefore, if the heart is closed, you cannot be able to understand the Dharma very well. And the heart can open when your heart is open with love. So therefore, you won't have selfish love, that the only love uh, the spouse or the family and nobody else um, that's very close, that's small love, and Master used to use this for small love. So you're going to have great love, you've got to open your heart and love everyone. So when you do that, when you open that door of your heart, your mind will be open. Then you're able to explain and understand the teachings. 
So with an abundance of love, we can, we can resonate with the Buddha mind. Why? Because that's what Buddha has been teaching about great love. And, and, and when I engage uh, um, dialogues with the other faith, they all also have this uh, great love. But like I said, it's only man's interpretation of what that love is. Um, they say, oh, you're not part of this uh, group, therefore I don't care, I cannot love you. But the essence of the Qing is the same. So it is transmitted our mind to the next and those whom resonates with. So those who resonate with, and this is why when we could to, to resonate with that, you have to grow in your consciousness. Those who resonate with the Buddha mind are immediately the Buddhas. So, um, the, in the past, I, for example, um, there is a Greek practitioner known as Mila Repa. Mila Repa was a uh, householder and uh, he went into the occult practices. But because of all the past uh, unwholesome deeds that he did, when he found the right teacher, and the right teacher is called Mapa. And Mapa taught him, he knew what, of, what, he, what of the bad things he did in the past. So he made him to build single handedly a house uh, of uh, a circular house um, with his bare hands and nobody without anybody's help. And because he destroyed a village before and he knew that because he was an enlightened one. So therefore to cleanse his karma and purify him before he can receive the teachings. And because he, because he need get his mind to resonate, he has to clear off those karmic bads. So when he finished building that and he said, no, I don't like that. Go, go build me a square house. And he did that. And after building a square house, he said, no, I don't like that. Build um, another one. So until that, he was almost gave up and, and on the words that he actually wanted to uh, uh, kill himself. And that's, that's when um, Mapa then gave him the right teaching. The point I want to make is that he, Benarapa, um, he got enlightened in that one lifetime. So the heart seal of the true Dharma or one vehicle cannot be accepted without great capability. So it was not to be disseminated improperly. And this is important because, and there's a reason why um, for me, um, I'm speaking purely for myself, I'm very careful about what I share with you. I, those which I'm not sure, I would say this is what I heard. Um, and I wouldn't, uh, or those things which I wanted to say, but I'm not sure I will hold myself back uh, from saying. So a lot of the sharing that I'm sharing with you is purely based on my, uh, obviously my many years of uh, self-realization and my contemplation. So, and, um, and I will not share with you all anything what the master has not spoken. So therefore, when I share with you all, and I will share with you my contemplation, right? Every time that I, at the end of what I share with you, and obviously this contemplation has been going on for the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so. And, um, and this also resonates and, it's, um, and I find that it resonates what Master said. So therefore I only pick those relevant ones uh, to share with you. So the lessons learned. Nowadays people gossip and use harsh speech. This is how they speak. And, and when you uh, read this uh, line, when I pick it up, because information flows so quickly, one press on a button and quickly transmit it and solve to a WhatsApp message or so on and so forth. And um, so we must not improperly dis uh, disseminate because it spread like a wildfire um, of what we, we are being shared. Now this is, we are in the Dharma degenerating age. So I'm very mindful of this Dharma degenerating age uh, when, when I'm, I'm in, because um, the minds of people are such that um, they're not the similar minds of what they uh, in the days during the time of the Buddha. So um, the things can be taken out of context. I'm sure you all have experienced that um, in, in, in your work, in, uh, when you're working. So therefore, um, the, the, uh, so most of the time, um, yeah, I, 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 as I shared with you, I, I tend to keep to myself. Um, yes, you, is this trying to be selfish? No, because unless I understand the mind of the other person, I've, I'm very apprehensive uh, in sharing very much. So I only share when I'm asked to. 
So only when the two dharma is engraved in our minds can we impress upon the minds of others. This is the point that I'm trying to say. And um, if that, that mind is not uh, open for engraving, uh, no matter what it is, you know why you do engrave the minds of others, you need, it's like engraving a seal, right? You need heat, right? So if it's not open, you burn the other person. And so instead of accepting it, it will become the opposite. It feels the pain. So this cannot be accepted without great capabilities. So you want to give this dharma to others, they must be able to accept it. So when teaching, the Buddha thought with great caution. And that's, to me, I think this to me, this resonated with me very well. As if the treasure of the returning king, how can we give this to others? Whose hands should it fall into? Whoever holds this for you so can issue orders. So we must be very cautious um, in, uh, in, in sharing. Um, the, normally, um, and you, you, you notice, I, I obviously I do a lot of writing. As, and, and one or two of you has asked me, uh, can, you know, can I forward to them what I've written? I, I don't because I you see a lot of this thing, you need explanation because the words written there, they are inadequate explain what a realization is but because i've been through that i know what it means um so therefore i only pick up certain lines as contemplation as i do uh, uh right now so practicing the path is not an easy task um we know that because we have to face through all this uh the tough journey ahead there will be boulders we got mountains for us to cross but if you know that it is not easy the simplest thing you must do is to travel light, right? If you want to walk the path, it's just like, when you're going to climb a mountain, you're going to cross the river, you're going to all the boulders around you, you cannot be carrying a, a heavy, heavy, heavy sack. You travel light. So how do you travel light? You learn to let go. So it's taken many lifetimes to earn this life, to be able to practice. And, um, and, and if you go and practice, uh, more and more, you will realize how long you think, how much merits you have earned in the past to earn this life, to be able to practice. And that is a subject of, uh, of another an, an talk. Uh, um, so you can verify the truth in the teachings. If any teachings you heard from world masters, and uh, uh, some of you may have heard that I've done this uh, with uh, master, master, uh, master Chenyan. Um, before I met her the first time, uh, and which, which is the carping arrange, that was in end of March 2017. Uh, three weeks before um, I had a meeting, and, and it was all meant uh, to engage with her, but I sat in contemplation, and I and it was just a a question. Um, that that I had, and um, that question nobody knows, and only I know. And I told myself uh, this question I will not ask anybody. And I once say I said I say to myself, uh, one day a great master will tell me the answer. So three weeks later, when I met her, uh, she told me. So this is the experience. This is one of the experience I can share with you about verifying the truth. This is why teachings are the true teaching. And you need to have the true teaching because we are in a Dharma degenerating age. That's the reason why it took me 30 years to, uh, to uh, then accept it. Expand your knowing of the teachings with elevated consciousness, uh, that of the spiritual consciousness to evolve. This elevated consciousness I just explained to you. So when you receive the Dharma, so you need to have this elevated consciousness. Okay, and it's only then one can evolve. So expand, elevate, evolve uh, in a path. Expand, but, but you know, elevate your consciousness. Then with that, with the Dharma seal, you can evolve. So you are on this one path. Oh, it's one great Dharma vehicle, right? So any path that you are involved with will support your practice in this one path. And obviously, and, and, and as you go on this journey, you, you as you journey through your life, you meet a lot of other practices too. You can listen to them 
but it's only one path and it's something that you must take to heart. So on relationship, it's a spiritual affinity. The good fortune in your spiritual cultivation will take you to connect with great masters to establish and re-establish good affinities. You see, this is um, the good fortune is what you call a spiritual endowment that you have in the practice. Um, the fact that you are able to meet a great master is already in itself a good fortune. So this spiritual fortune um, that you have, uh, you need to treasure that. And you need to treasure that because you, and, and for you, you have, you, you have been through many, many lifetimes to earn this. So do not waste it. So that you can observe the spiritual attainments. So when you have this great master, the master is not only just to teach us, but it's for us to observe. So remember, I said this is life is a journey of, of journey, learning. So when you learn, you see, right? So observing is seeing. So what are you observing? Not only you learn from the master, you observe what she does. And so that she possesses the qualities that you should emulate. So validate your understanding of the teachings and the skillful means in teaching the Dharma. So it's not just uh, learning what to for yourself, but learning her ways. So with that note, Khan and brothers and sisters, thank you. It's unlimited coming to our great brother Chin for the wonderful sharing you know, of the time given. I think uh, I think brother Chin can give